that is all dots is that <coughs> we want to look at the partial fragment case. Now we know that this so remember that you have this actually I didn't explain this clearly I guess. That is WJ is a subgroup of W and W is a subgroup of here because the other alpha is equal to so remember you have X half alpha equals 1 minus x alpha, minus 1 of x alpha, the other alpha minus 1. You have this definition. And uh, if you multiply x alpha on the left, you get 1 minus the other alpha. So the other alpha is equal to 1 minus x alpha, x alpha. So you can really represent one group as a linear combination of the two elements. So that's why you can realize one group inside here. Okay? And we know DF acts on DF star by this pulley detection. The other was WJ acts on DF star by this pulley detection. And uh, <coughs> we mentioned that DF and DF star, WJ invariant, is YJ bullet. So YJ bullet sends everything to WJ invariant. Subset. And we know this is as topic to HT of T on PJ. That's HT of T on PJ. This is the push forward P dot sum. So if you want to start it here, everything here can be written as actually this is a subjective map. So that's equal to yj bullet df star. Okay. So if you want to start at this right hand side, you cannot use bullet detection. The reason is that so yeah was the bullet action of here. Um everything here is already written as WJ bullet. Now if you have another element C, if you want to let C X on here, so just like you have C bullet YJ of F, you cannot write it as may not be equal to YJ of something. Okay? Because C does not commit with YJ. C is an element of EF and uh, if you have Zx on this one, you may not have something of the form yj put it. Another way to say that is, if you have a wj invariant element, you apply z, you may not have wj invariant element. So that's why you cannot use pull detection. Now, then this property comes up. Because all dot and pull detection commute with each other. So, if you have like C, O dot, Y, J of F, Y, J is just a bullet of F. Now, because they commute with each other, that's Y, J, bullet, C, O dot, F. So, you still get something with the form Y, J, bullet. Okay? So, Yang was TF, X on TF, stop, WJ, right? By this old option. So, why they are same? Yeah, I mean, why this is the same? Because you first apply this YJ bullet, mm -hmm. and then you apply old dot. But old dot means with bullet. Oh, I see. So, you can switch the other yes, yes, yes. yes. oh, okay. <laughs> So, that's why if you have something W invariant, WJ invariant, you still get something of WJ invariant. So, that's why TF old dot on this TF star. So now let's point E. 
So this belongs to H T T of T1 P J. And actually this I call it point J, this corresponds to this E P J. In other words, the superclass for the identity. So okay, so this is joint work with Christian Leonard and the Zainuri. So say that TF stop WJ is equal to TF O dot point. That was this TF TF star WJ or this cohomology of T1 PJ is a module over DF where this O dot action of generated by one element. But of course we you know this is larger, this is smaller. So actually that's not free. Okay. So it's generated by this element, but it's not a free module of rank one. It's just generated by one element. And of course, then you can define this. Okay, so then we need to look at WJ. First, WJ is the, as I mentioned last time, <coughs> W from W, such that length of WU, with the length of W, and the U from W sub J. So this is the representatives of these left cosines. With this WJ, <coughs> we can define hidden JW. Actually, to be honest, if you to be more precise, you have to use the video sequence because this choice is still there. You define it, so there's an upper J, and you define it to be uh, X, I, W, Reverse the sequence O dot point J. Then here and that that is theta i sum W J is equal to cos Samuelson plus or W. For this W in W of J. This gives you the part semi class. And of course, because you can let, because this cohomology of G mod PJ is equal to generated by one element. So if you keep ID, uh, the action of DF on point J, you can get everything. So in other words, you can apply like four of two elements on this point J, you get all the all the semis and cuts, and that's the meaning of this theorem. This generalizes previous works, so if H equals to Chang'e, logical, the logical work, which has practically some but for K theory, that is not known, and uh, our result is the first. So, in other words, if you want, because the nice thing about superclass or supercalculus is that it's generated by one class, the class of point. After you apply divided difference operators or the Missouri operators or BGG operators, you can get all superclass. And uh, now here we have a similar situation that is, for partial frame variety, you can also do the same thing. You just use the old dot, and then you apply it on the class of the identity point. You can get everything. Okay, so that's why it's nice. So yeah, when I put uh, when I put y j dot p j e for mm -hmm. the uh, place of p point j, okay. then we we have two product plot plot dot and the new product. Y yes. So we may change the order of product then is this just yes yeah that's correct if you have because this mm -hmm. actually is c o dot y j bullet yes you're right yeah. e has, you can switch you can switch then yes. is this exactly the same as the bus class the y j okay. yeah i see what your question is yeah. so yeah because this is c o dot y switch it. 
Okay, that's a good question. Basically, say that, so, for instance, yeah, yeah xi. Uh, x i is not very equal to x yes. o dot and uh, because o dot oh, actually I see. so actually this is saying I that see. if you consider h t of t mod p oh, h t of t mod p j mm -hmm. and uh, if you consider like a super class mm -hmm. you consider the push forward to the star mm -hmm. the star of mm -hmm. actually this gives you So that's a super variety. Mm -hmm. You can look at this image here, which also gives a super variety mm -hmm. from T1 PJ. And this class is equal to the push forward of that class. Oh, I see. And this reflects this reflective. Oh, I see. Yes. So, uh, so geometrically, you can yeah, prove it like that, and algebraically, that's the proof. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, everything is compatible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. And uh, of course, we have a pre duality that is, is theta i w j is dual. To now we know we have this x i sub w. You must put it point E, and then you have the sum. Yeah, the sum. And uh, you have my yj makes then into wj moment. Then you have this duality via the operate duality. Okay. And uh, one thing I should mark is that. Uh, that's one thing that I was cheating. That is, remember I defined x alpha is 1 over x alpha, 1 over x delta alpha. And actually, everything about geometry, when I was identifying with cohomology, I used this capital X operator. But that's cheating. It should be the following one, which is comma alpha minus x. This appeared once, I think. And, uh, you should replace all the capital X by capital Y. X and Y and X are very similar to each other. But that's the geometric one. This one is not, actually, we don't know the geometric meaning. In cohomology, they identify because comma are equal to zero. In cohomology, in K theory, they are dual operators. That's like the opposite operator. But for general, we don't know the meaning. And um, so when you want to use cohomology, you should always use capital Y operator. Okay. Okay, so now the last part is hyperbolic cohomology. So that's a name that we studied. I mean, of course, you have hyperbolic in yeah, many contexts. But for cohomology, there's no such thing as only cohomology. We just use it. I think it's temporary. So if you don't see body cohomology in other contexts, that's because we are the first one to use it. Okay. So for us, body cohomology corresponds to the oriented cohomology for this FH, that is y minus xy over 1 minus mu minus 2xy. Well, over this ring, q, q minus 1. So starting from now, we have to introduce a new parameter, q. You know, what is mu? Mu is t plus t minus 1. So you want to invert t, oh, sorry. Yeah. Let's use t. So you want to invert t, and you want to invert t plus t minus 1. So that's the formal group law, we call it hyperbolic formal group law. And uh, the oriented cohomology corresponding to this formal group law, we call it hyperbolic cohomology. So it has the nice property that if you write on this 
separate relation between LW and SW prime. You have a linear combination, and this coefficient does not depend on W. If you have, um, actually, I guess I should put it this way. If you have two reduced sequence, I W and I W prime, two reduced sequence of W, the difference will be written as a linear combination of x v such that coefficient actually does not depend on the reduced sequence. Of course, that's a property that are not satisfied by most of the formal group laws. For entity or multiplicative, the coefficients disappear, and for hyperbolic, the coefficients are constants. That's nice. Uh, but we, we will not use it in this talk. Instead, let me mention, uh, recall the com uh, definition of hack algebra. Of course, some people call it Iwahori hack. That's an algebra generated by Ti one m h. Uh, generated uh, with relation, first relation, that is, if you have ij, that's isj, the power, power of mij equal to 1, then you have appropriate relation. And the second one is the quadratic relation, say that ti is equal to 1 minus t, i plus 1. That's the hat type. And uh, now you can define evolution. H to H. The fastalustic evolution, sending to T to T minus 1, and the Ti to Ti minus, and you have Z1, Z2, it's mapped to Z2, Z1. Okay. So it's, oh, sorry, I should be careful. It's a evolution, not anti evolution. C1, C2 bar is equal to C1 bar times C2 bar. So it respects the product. <laughs> so that's the definition of the evolution. And then that's a unique evolution satisfying the three properties. Now, the Kassanustic basis, uh, the coefficient, the Kassanustic basis are the, the nice basis that are invariant under this evolution. So, Gamma W. The cosmological basis is equal to, uh, let's put it this way, we all put T W. So, because you have great ratio, you can define T W for any W. Now, this cosmological basis is defined to be gamma W belonging to this. B less than equal to W, P less of W minus than equal to V, P V W P V. So in other words, the transition matrix from T W to gamma W is an upper triangular or lower triangular, depending on how you organize it. And the constant the diagonal entry is equal to one and uh, the there's some Restriction on this is PVW belongs to. Oh, sorry, I, I, there's some mistake in here. I write this doesn't make sense. Uh, oh, sorry. This one. Then what you should be able to write it as a linear combination and uh, the leading term is one, and the remaining terms vanish un unless v is less than equal to w. And then this coefficient should be a polynomial of degree at least one, at no constant term. Okay? That's the, so if you assume w satisfies this, then this gamma w is uniquely determined, actually. That's called the Kastanowski basis. And uh, of course, to compute the basis, you have to compute the coefficients, and these coefficients can be written as this way. That is less of 
They satisfy some kind of positivity conjecture, and the positivity comes from the fact that the coefficients are dimensions of some kind of uh, intersection homology of people like this. So dimensions of some vector spaces, that's why it's positive. So L, L, L W is the length of W. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. For example, so of course it's extremely difficult to compute the Kastanovsky polynomials for general case. For examples, there are some computations already. For example, if you have W equal to W0, is PV W0 is equal to 1 for any V. So then it's gamma W0 is equal to the sum for any V length of V W0 minus length of V PV. So it has this nice form. All the cosmonistic polynomials equal one. But you don't have such good cases for uh, in general. Okay, so that's the cosmonistic part or okay, part. Next, so from now on, the H is a hyperbolic homology, hyperbolic arrangement homology. And the uh, and, uh, F equals FH. So if I write F, then it's I'm talking about FH. Uh, so starting from now, I'm not talking about a general arrangement homology, I'm just talking about hyperbolic homology. Then there's a lemma. Saying that we have edge as morphing of df sending t i to view by i minus t. So that's one thing I didn't explain. Because df is generated by s and s i. Okay? And uh, okay, I have to use this y alpha. So you take this y. You can replace x by y as I mentioned. And no serious difference between x and y. So this is called the formal alpha in terms of two algebra. Now if you don't want to take all the y, all the if you don't want to take the s copy, the power series copy, you get this algebra. So this is that like you remove the alpha and t's. So this is called the formal Domsuya algebra. No alpha. This one contains the alpha and t's. Of course, that's a subset. Okay. And uh, now because of this property, because the constants, the coefficients are constants. To it. So that's why the coefficients actually belongs to this coefficient, this polynomial ring, the wrong polynomial ring. So that's why this itself actually is an algebra. Okay? Because normally if you take the operators y, you generate some algebra, the coefficients can be computed and can be belongs into capital S instead of this coefficient ring. But in this hyperbolic case, all the coefficients are constants. So that's why this is a sub-algebra. And this sub algebra actually is asymorphic to hack. Now remember I said that's a line, like there's a line of uh, algebras along this line of formal group cross. FA, FN, FH, and more general formal group cross. For each one of them, you have DFA, <coughs> DFN, <coughs> DFH. <coughs> and uh, if you recall the table I sketched last time, you also have this. HFA, form alpha, and hack algebra. FFM, FH. And actually, in the table from, last, from yesterday, this is the degenerate hack. This is the alpha Iwaholic hack. This is the zero hack. That's the new hack. 
They are basically on the two lines. And now what we have here is that we have a smooth here. Okay. In other words, this you are holy hack actually as morphic to the the Missouri algebra for hyperbolic cohomology. That's something we cannot explain. We don't know why you have such thing. <coughs> but nonetheless, if you have that, now you see Ti plus T. That's a response of rings. Now Ti plus T is mapped to what? Map to mu bar i. Okay. Now why that's interesting? Because if you look at the casualistic basis, I didn't even give the example, but this piece is equal to gamma r. Okay. <coughs> this is equal to the casualistic basis for the simple reflection SR, and it's mapped to y. So because of that, we have the following theorem. Saying that, um, okay, let's call this as more than five. Five of the longest element, the characteristic basis for the longest element is equal to mu, uh, mu of length of W0 uh, y part. Now, that's interesting because <coughs> this is a Kastanowski basis <coughs> for W0. Kastanowski basis is defined <coughs> algebraically, and uh, the relation of it <coughs> with flag right is that you can use Kastanowski basis. <coughs> you can use Kastanowski basis to describe cohomology, intersection cohomology of flag right, of super varieties. So that's the only relation. Other than that, there's no relation between cohomology and the uh, Kastanowski basis. Now this one has this has a relation. Why? Because if you apply phi on this gamma w zero, we get this object. Now what is y phi? If you recall y phi, if you let y phi then belongs to here, here, f is the polyhedral form, form. And if you apply y phi. EF star. Y pi will send everything to W variant. And if you look at the meaning of in cohomology, <coughs> it means the following. I didn't mention this and just. <coughs> In other words, this y pi actually is the push forward to the base point because g mod b is a spec is a k variety, so you have a structure map from g mod b to spec k. That's a projective map because this is a projective variety. So this projective map induces the push forward, and this push forward equals to the action of y pi. And now, if you look at the Kastanowski basis, let's say that this gamma w zero corresponds to this geometric map. So that's a surprise because that's a Normally, no one expects the relation of Kastanowski basis with cohomology of G B, except this inception cohomology. But here we have another one. Okay. So that's the interesting part of this comparison between Hack algebra and the Kastanowski algebra. The lemma under the phi, uh, how the Kastanowski basis. Correspond to uh, D. So that's a difficult question. For the example case, for the easy case, like I said, if you have uh, gamma w, if w equal to SR, then gamma i or gamma SR is equal to Ti plus T. That's why it equals to here. And uh, in the gen for general case, if you have gamma w0, the longest element, you have that one. But in general, you don't know. The reason is because Kastanowski basis is defined like that, but the polynomials are not known. There's no formulas of computing this p. That's a very difficult question, actually. 
Uh, so the, the only known thing is the coefficients are positive? Yes. For this problem, you all just know that yeah, the coefficients are positive, and uh, of course, in some special case, for instance, if length of W, I mean, for this notation, length of W minus length of V, that's equal to 2, then the polynomial is equal to 1. And that, there are some other properties, but none of them are general enough to give all the information about this. So remember, this was defined like you have some upper triangular matrix and the diagonal equal to 1, and that's it. It's defined by existence con con uh, restriction, condition, not by not constructive. So you don't know this information about this polynomial. That's why you don't know this one. In some special case, like Grossmanian case, there are some information. But in general, it's not known. That's why in our case, we cannot describe that. Of course, if you already have an information for P, then it will be not very nice for us. But that's not known yet. Okay, so okay, part of that, we started to look at this object. So you have H as a topic with CF. Again, F is the hyperbolic form of the group. That's included in the this it has alpha and piece, this one does not have alpha and piece. Now this acts on CF star. By this O dot. So Yang was BF H. H acts on BF star. Okay. So let the uh, pair of Kazanustic Schubert plus AL W but J. Uh, okay, you can also restrict yourself to WJ invariant and if you take J equal to empty sets, then of course it is a spin star. Again, we are talking about hyperbolic form. Then you can define this Kastanustic superclass to be uh, gamma W, you apply the phi, then this lands into this DF, can be considered inside this DF, then you let it hold out with point J. That's the Kastanustic superclass. And uh, a corollary is that, so this theorem, that's for W0, the longest <coughs> element. But you can restrict yourself to a subloop system determined by a subset J of the simple loops. It still works. So that's why you have the foreign theorem, which says that, okay, that's a bit technical. Let me give the easy case, or oh, just that case, is equal to uh, a fundamental class. So this is inside H T of C dot T J. And this is saying that the Kastanustic super class is equal to the fundamental class. This. So this can be generalized. So instead of considering J, you can look at something similar to that. Avoid the technical property, just skip it. Now we have this conjecture, that's the main motivation of this work, of this considering this hyperbolic homology. So the reason is that you know if you have C mod T or you consider the super class, super variety. This variety in general is singular, so that's why you cannot define the super class. Okay? You have used the Bose Samuelson resolution, but the resolution, different review sequence gives you different Bose Samuelson class. So, in other words, you have no canonical way to define class when the super variety is smooth, uh, it's not smooth. So, now when XW, the Schubert variety, is smooth. Of course, when it's smooth, you can define class. So if XWJ 
swoops. If I discuss retains that you just define, so you have x bar j w going to t one p j. Now because that's smooth, that if that is not a smooth, now this map because that's a super wide is a closed inviting which is proper. So if you define this to be i, then you can define the class to be i lowest bar push forward of the identity in this cohomology of this super writing is belongs to the edge of equivalent or not in my feature. This is denoted to be the class of this smooth sub variety. So that's why if super variety is smooth, you can define its class and then you're canonical way. But in general, this is not equal to the for Samuelson class. Because you have a choice here, but here you have no choice. That's why you really are not equal. But this class exists, and this class exists. Now the question is, how to represent this class? This class in our language is given by, can we erase? Remember this x i sub w, put it point of j, or o dot. Okay? So it's easy to describe this one, but what about this one? We want to describe it. In general, we don't know how to do that, but for hyperbolic case, we have a conjecture saying that suppose this is smooth, then you have this class. Then this class is equal to the Kasmanustic super class. So another way to put it is that if the super right is smooth, then this super class gives you some description of the Kasmanustic basis. Okay? So this conjecture is proved in some cases. For instance, in this case, if w equal to w zero, in that case the super variety is the whole vector space, uh, the whole flag variety, partial flag variety, and then it works. Of course, that's just one, one case and very special case. So it's proved in some other cases, but I don't want to mention that because the other cases are too technical to describe. Another case I can mention is that the conjecture goes if C not Pj equal to the projective space. Uh, of course, in that case, all the super varieties are smooth. But the super varieties are precisely projective spaces. So here. So you have P. M dimensional projective space containing M minus one dimensional containing M minus two and all the projective spaces and all of them give you the super varieties and they are all smooth because they are all projective spaces. So that's also a very special case and in that case the conjecture holds. Now last conjecture. How about Grassmann? Uh, Grassmannian. Ah, yeah. For Grassmannian, we have uh, proved it, but uh, it has not appeared yet. And that's related to the next conjecture. So, you can say Grassmannian. That's not the check files. I will check it real myself. Now, actually, this Grassmannian case is a sub case, or it's a special case of this conjecture. Which says that if x j w the super writing has a small resolution, then this resolution. So if you have a resolution, then you have a class determined by this resolution. Then this resolution if a super class. So actually we prove that for class many actually for class many you always have smaller solutions. Smaller solution is in the sense that if you resolve it, the fibers has a very small codimension. And uh, if you have a any class many has smaller solution. 
And uh, now if you have a small resolution, then this resolution gives you this super class. For instance, now at the subcase, if the super variety is already smooth, the small resolution is itself. And then this class, or the class given by this small resolution, which is trivial, gives the Castellustic super class. So that's why if you so if you prove this conjecture for cross manning and uh, then you get that conjecture for cross manning okay so this is for cross manning this is stronger than that conjecture and then we prove this conjecture for cross manning but this has not appeared yet I still work on that okay so seven more minutes yes I can write on copy this so as I said, this work is for body case. But now the next resolution, okay, didn't know I have fine, so I skipped it. I think I can still do it again. So we know that again, that's for so this is for general homology, not for hyperbolic. We know you have this O dot from here. It's O dot actually. Now, on top of it, you can have a chain complex. This one you take all the j with all the one, so of course we have precisely n of them, and you take the wj invariant. Now if you take j of all the two, you also have this one. You have this sequence, and uh, all of them have this section of here by this o dot, because o, here o dot from here and o dot on each copy, so you can extend it to the direct sum. So this is a, a chain complex. of PF modules. And what about the differentials? The differentials are alternating. <coughs> okay, let me put it this way. work by myself with Christian Lennon and the Kirill Zanuri, so you can find it in our preprint. So differentials are alternating sum of Why? Because so basically this is like HT of T mod B, that's HT of T mod PJ. So you have push forward. And uh, now this one, if you have a J here, another J prime here, let's say J has one element, J prime has two elements, and the J prime contains J, then you have push forward. Okay? Just like you have if you have WJ invariant, you can push forward to WJ prime variant here. So you have this uh, uh, push forwards and we take certain alternating sum and this alternating sum you have to define it carefully. Then you get a chain complex of PF modules and also S modules because all of them are free S, free S modules. And uh, now the nice property of this is that it, so that's a I don't know whether you call it chain complex or co-chain complex. If you say that's degree zero, degree one, degree two. And that's a co-chain complex. And uh, it is exact everywhere. So it's exact here, here, everywhere. So kernel is equal to the image, kernel equal to the image. It's exact everywhere except for here stop. So exact here and everywhere except at this piece. And at this piece, it's and cohomology
at f star is um, mean of rank 1 over s. So that's the exact sequence of, uh, that's a chain convex of three S modules. It's exact everywhere except at here. At here, the cohomology at here, that is the kernel of this map, is a free S module of rank 1 over S. So it, this is a free DF module of rank 1, but we don't care about that. If you care about the S module structure, then it's free at rank 1 over S here. So that's the theorem we have. And the proof of it is by using, by uh, rewriting some chain <coughs> complex given by, you know, so if you have worked with loop systems, you should know uh, that's an Indian guy, and he died several years ago. He's in Indiana University. He has a work about cosmolustic basis, and that's in the 90, I think in 1990. And uh, here's some byproduct, I mean, some chain complex similar to this one, purely algebraic. And now we give a geometric interpretation of that chain complex because everything appearing here are geometric. This is a cohomology, that's a cohomology, and this map is a uh, linear sum of push forwards. So we got this chain complex with this property almost for free because you just rewrite his work. But we don't have we don't have any application of this theorem actually. Here is your assume uh, f is a half. No, uh, any, 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 any except in the last piece we can only prove it. The last piece, I mean, we can prove that it's exact everywhere except at here, and uh, the cohomology we cannot compute unless f equal to additive, multiplicative, or form or hyperbolic. Then we can prove that it has rank one. In general case, we cannot prove it, but it should be the same. And uh, yeah, that's a very nice result, I would say. And we got it for free. We have no applications. So we don't know whether it's important or not. Actually, I give several talks, and uh, there's no comments about this. Well, what's the meaning of these four models? <laughs> uh, so in homology, in active, multiplicative, or hyperbolic case, this is generated by uh, the super class corresponding to W0. So in other words, two one P. That's the only thing we know about this. But uh, no, there's no other results. And uh, as I said, many ex several experts have put off my talk talking about this, but they didn't give any comment. They didn't know whether it's boring or it's interesting. We got it for free. Yeah. Okay, that's everything that I want to say. Thank you.